Hi there man, this is session 6, SC Linux administration. Session 6 is on working with SC Linux policies. So this is again uh, extension of the session 5 where we studied uh, some basic configurations, how the policies are configured with SE manage and displaying the details about the configuration and policy store. This is a uh, next level of policies how to work with the policies so the agenda of this session is SC Linux policy language source policy modules in a monolithic policy loadable policy modules building and installing monolithic policies build and load process of for SC Linux policy the make targets generating policy files for deployment supported user template with SC policy login or policy generation handling device files using device rules setting SC Linux on device nodes this is basically the information part of building the policy if you look at this is prerequisite for you know before we actually download and build the policy so actual compilation building will happen in the next session and this session is introduction to that or the theoretical background required for that purpose and that's what we will be covered in this session so the language policy modules monolithic policy loadable policy modules building installing monolithic policies build and load process for SC Linux policy make targets we are going to talk about all these things in this session not a very lengthy session because it is as I said is a theoretical background required for compiling and building the policy which we will do in the next session so SC Linux policy language language is not C language it is a quite, very interesting language it is quite user friendly and easy to read easy to understand language and the language is called common intermediate language CIL it is in the development kernel policy language there are three basic types of policy source files that can contain language statements and rules monolithic policy base policy and module policy or that is non base policy using and applying SC Linux is all about writing and understanding these policies whether it is monolithic or base or module policy because if you are responsible for implementing security for your own application uh, Raman uh, let me share my experience this training I delivered for a company they developed their own software that was supposed to run on Linux and as I, as I was discussing after the previous of, uh, session that they were looking for developing SC Linux policies for their application means right from scratch as I said by default if you are running a, if you are developing a custom application uh, that will be running unconfined domain there will be no confinement for that process there will be no confinement for that system so they were developing policies for their own application and for them for that requirement they undergone this training that was a four full days training uh, where I covered only these 12 lectures which you are undergoing right now there were 10 lectures at that time but I just enhanced them I added some more stuff now it have become uh, two more lectures have been added to that based on their feedback based on their uh, expectation I just added after the training was over uh, they said you must include these two topics also so uh, the course is enhanced similarly after your training also if you suggest something that should be included uh, that will make my so the, that's how my agenda keeps on increasing my course content keeps on increasing because I take participants feedback and I add that to my course okay using and applying SC Linux is all about writing and understanding these policies so source policy module in a monolithic policy monolithic the name itself suggests that we have a single file 
and the, all the policies are there in this file. Means a single file, all rules are there within this. So a common type of SE Linux policy today is monolithic policy. It is constructed as single binary file by check policy. You are asking me, can we see those rules? Uh, while it is compiled, after it is compiled, you cannot see them. But before compilation, definitely we will take a look at how the rules appear, how they are configured. So it is constructed as a single binary file by check policy. It is a command, it is a process and is directly loaded into the kernel. As C Linux policies are constructed in terms of smaller units called modules. There are a couple of different methods to make a policy modular. A widely used method called source modules. It supports the development of a monolithic policy. Source modules are combined as text files through a combination of shell scripts or M4 macros and make files that together create a crude high level language. The policy modules are essentially concatenated together, grouped together into a single large source file called policy.conf and then this file policy.conf is compiled by check policy into the binary file readable by the kernel. This process is explained theoretically by means of sentences. We'll take a look at the same process by means of a figure, by means of a diagram. What am I trying to talk about? That will make you understand that. Loadable policy modules. A new method for creating a modular policy is called loadable modules, which uses recent extensions to check policy and a modular compiler called check module to construct loadable policy modules compiled independently of each other. In the loadable module case, which is unexpected, you know, expectedly smaller, core subset of policy is constructed called base module. So what we do, we create, we construct a subset of policy, the bare minimum called base module. You create the base module like you create the monolithic policy and then we extend this base module by adding our own modules to that kind of extension. With loadable modules, however, you can streamline the base module including only rules relating to core operating system and rest of the policy is created as a separate loadable modules. So that is means in this slide what we have understood is there is a base module called the core and there is a subset core subset of policy base module then we extend this base module by creating loadable modules by adding our own modules and then we integrate it and that becomes the uh, a complete policy for us. So, building and installing monolithic policy is all about this concept, this process, understanding this process. Remember that if you install your policy, the kernel will immediately begin to enforce access based on the rules in the policy. It is advisable that you experiment with policy writing with the system in permissive mode set and force is equal to zero until you become more familiar with the policy language and its ramifications. Of course you should always run production system in enforcing mode that is true but when you are building the policies when you are drawing for the first time you should run it in permissive mode and this is the process now and this is what theoretically I discussed. This is the graphical representation 
a pictorial representation of the discussion so far. So look at this. It starts very interesting and this is a million dollar figure. We have policy source modules. These are modules. We are writing these modules and you will be writing these modules. Then you use make command or the scripts or macros and so on. Using this make or scripts or m4 macros, you develop the policy. You group them together where we have classes and type and format statement, rules, roles, users, constraints, resource labeling specifications, everything. You feed modules into this and then you use check policy. Using check policy, your binary policy file will be created. And then load policy will load this policy into the kernel and the policy become effective. So the load policy will take the policy to the kernel and now you are into the kernel space. That is why it is highlighted this is a kernel space. So in the kernel what we have is the SC Linux file system. So here whatever rules you have defined, whatever module you have defined, this is the SC Linux LSM module. So security server is running here policy rules and access decision logic is uh, you know uh, running here so whenever you are requesting for a service whenever you are requesting to access some files through a service we are they are tracked using access vector cache whether there is a cache hit or cache miss so cache miss yes or no if cache uh, miss definitely you are not allowed if it is uh, cache is hit then security server policy rules and that will be applied to your uh, access what you are trying to access so this is the policy building loading policy into the kernel once more we would like to do it we start from here we write our own policy modules we study the source code writing starts from here we use make or scripts or m4 macros and we use it with the base policy. This is the base policy where we have classes, type enforcement and all that. Then we use check policy. The process goes to the check policy. Then policy binary file is created using the check policy. And then we load the policy and the policy is loaded into the kernel. And then we have SC Linux file system inside the kernel which is controlling the behavior of the processes in the files. And this is what I have discussed theoretically so far and this is a diagramic representation of that. I hope this makes the process of building the policy very clear. Next, the make targets. Generally we have uh, three targets but we have a lot more targets. I will show you in the next session that uh, complete policy building process from the source code will be a part of this training which we will do in the next session. Policy source directories have make file because the demonstration uh, will make it more clear. So this session uh, together with next session will make it complete session. So the entire session is quite lengthy so therefore I divided it into two parts. Uh, so I thought that let's do it in the first we'll understand the whole concept and then we'll actually do that. So policy source directories have make file that automates this process. In the policy which is installed correctly uh, that should be in ETC SC Linux strict SRC policy and the make targets are this is the policy install and load these targets will create when you say make policy or when you say make install or when you say make load what is the meaning when you say make policy this will make policy policy dot con file and policy dot version locally to test the compilation and check for errors it will not load it into the kernel it will just make this fi file, it will just make the policy, will not install it, will not load it, install. Do everything that, that policy, make the policy plus install the binary file uh, such that it will be loaded into the kernel, will be, mind it, it is not loading into the kernel at the boot time and policy configuration file. That means we are making it ready to be loaded into the kernel next time we boot the system. If you want to everything, do everything right now, so you can use load. Load everything, do everything that make policy does, plus immediately load the policy file into the kernel. So in a way, this is the, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the 
target this is basically will not only come make the policy.com file and policy.version file but also install them plus also uh, you know uh, load them right now the policy will become effective immediately and install the file context files so what we do we normally start with the uh, policy configuration and then installation and then load so depending on our need we'll be doing these targets uh, next time and in the next session when we'll be compiling the policy from the source file so sc linux user space generating policy files for deployment sc linux user space utilities offer a tool that generate files for custom policies this tool is called sc policy generation se pol gen this is pro provided by policy core utils hyphen d e v e l you need to install it mind it if your system fails to develop policies uh, compile policies uh, remember you'll get some hint in the logs error logs error messages i got that error uh, that this command is not able to run command not found and the command was python so uh, i noted that python was not installed so i just installed yum install python star everything was installed and next time i was able to build that so uh, i just want to make it uh, clear that i have tried and tested all these commands before i was discussing it to generate a skeleton the file set for for example pg sql admin role we can use TERM user option to generate code for the interactive users. Let's do that now. This makes sense and we'll practice this now. Okay. So let me create a directory where I'll generate this template. First, let me uh, find out whether my uh, RPM is installed or not. Yum hyphen. Okay. Uh, let's install it. If it is not installed, it will show you. Okay. Yum install policy core utils hyphen d e v e l this is the package which is required so it is already installed now we can use that command s e pol gen s e pol gen hyphen hyphen terminal user hyphen n pg sql underscore admin this was the command which we tried uh, the policy template will be generated and we can take a look at uh, how the policy look like right Now the policies are generated. Take a look at this. All these files are generated and we'll go one by one into all these files. These are just template files to get getting started with the policy. The important part is TE, type enforcement. Specific file is used by the compiler when it will compile this policy. This is interfaces. If the this policy requires some interfaces, interfaces will be defined here. And this is FC and this is a script which will generate this file. Let's start with the TE, which is most important for us, which we will be understanding in detail in our session. So TE. So this is policy module, which we have just created, PG SQL underscore admin. And we can do the customization here. And the template is created here. So user domain, restricted user template. And this is a, just a template. We have to learn this and we have to start editing these files. So user, domain use interactive fds 
So whatever we created, it has created this and this is a template file created for you for the policy. Same way if you use FC, this is nothing, this is context. We have not specified anything here. And uh, next was IF that is interfaces. Uh, the, this is interfaces, what interfaces are allowed, roles allowed like interface very interesting i i took some time considerable time to understand this uh, you know structure here this is the very important part look at this this is back code and i committed this mistake when i was working when i, when I was demonstrating this to the students i thought it is a code but it is a back code interface back code pg sql admin role match change and you start with a single quote here look at this single quote so here it is back quote and here it is single quote then it is again back quote here not a single quote is a back quote generate required again it is a back quote role pg sql admin r and this is a straight quote here so very interestingly we have to be careful about that allow dollar uh, one so this is a template this requires uh, more theoretical knowledge. We need to learn more about it. But right now, we are just trying to understand the very, very basic thing so that we have an idea uh, not to understand it, not to develop it, but to see how they are organized so that at least the existing source file we can observe, organize, and we make custom changes if required. And now the SQL script, pg sql admin.sh. And this is a script which is created. So uh, directory name, change to the directory uses, and this is a script which will generate for your uh, generate your policy. All right. Now we'll understand these files and their significance in our lecture. Let's continue. So these are the files which are generated by this. Let's continue understand the significance of each of these files. The PG SQL admin SELinux.spec, this file. This file is used to build RPM files, allowing administrators to deploy custom policies through their standard software lifecycle. So RPM file will be created uh, using .spec file, that is specification file. The PG SQL underscore admin.sh script, this script is created to build the policy. So this build the policy, load it into the system, generate a standard manual page for the module, update the context files on the system uh, to accommodate the new user and finally build RPM package using the spec file. So that, that, that was the idea actually, what you might have learned. Though I'm not saying that you have understood everything, though I'm not saying that you will be able to start writing the policy right away, no. But a visualization okay we need to create these files okay we need to start building the policies uh, start writing the programs in these files and this is how the process uh, of building a policy starts with then use of se pol gen the use of this this command which we did se policy generation or se policy generate allows you to easily start off with a common set of policy files so Definitely that was the takeaway from this session so far. What was the takeaway? That when we want to start our policy writing, what we should start, how we should start, what is the process of starting, how many files are to be created, what should be there in those files. Can we have some, some idea about it? Can we have some kind of template where we start from, start writing the policy? That was the idea and I'm sure that target is achieved, that, that goal is achieved. Supported user template with SE policy generation, admin user which we tried for administrative privilege user domain, confined admin for administrative but otherwise limited user domains, desktop user for standard end user domains and X user to low privilege end user domain that can use X server. These are the templates which are already available. So you can use any of these templates to generate the uh, template files or starting files uh, to give you a head start in writing the policy. The context option with MKDIR, if, okay, that is new thing. If you want to create a directory with SE context, means you, when you are creating the directory, by default, it will be unconfined. But if you want to create a directory with context or with a label, you can use uh, this command uh, with hyphen hyphen context option. 
so create a directory temp4 with context user home t and MKD, using mkdir the default will not work so therefore what you need to do is you need to use hyphen hyphen context option hyphen hyphen context that can tell you know we can tell the utility to set a particular context on the given directory so uh, that's how this is uh, i thought this is a very common command mkdir but uh, setting the context while directory is being created uh, probably you might not have done it so that's the reason i included this command here because it was on demand it was on demand by the you know previous training in the previous training participants said the how we set context on a given directory while creating it so i thought of including one example in that so this was example not directly related to the policy but yes uh, of course useful so hyphen hyphen context is equal to user u object r user home t and uh, sensitivity s0 temp4 and then we can verify that using ls hyphen lz d handling device files Linux has a long history of device managers. Initially, administrators needed to make sure that device nodes are already present on the file system. Gradually, more dynamic approaches were used for device management. Nowadays, device files are managed through a combination of pseudo file system, that is dev tempfs, and a user space device manager called udev. This device manager ha has been merged in the system D as well, becoming system D hyphen U dev D. This is a basic information about the device files, how they are managed. Now, the main configuration file for U dev is handled through U dev rules. These rules are one liners. that contain a matching part and an, an action part. If this matches this, then this action will be taken. The matching part is made up of validations to verify that yes, if it is matches that are executed against the event that you did receive from the Linux kernel. And this is based on a key value pair that out obtained from the event and include the kernel provided device name that is kernel device subsystem subsystem and kernel driver the driver attribute a double t r environment variable that are active that is env the linux kernel will also inform the device manager about the device hierarchy so hierarchically related information is provided through key value pair whose keys is defined in the plural form like subsystems instead of subsystem drivers instead of driver and so on then what we need is what we have for instance to make a particular USB web camera that matched a related pair it will look something like this something like kernel is this subsystem is this subsystems USB attribute attribute value attribute id product this so this is how we define the pair key value pair the values of kernel subsystem subsystems attribute attribute right the second part of udv rules is the action to take the most common action is to create a symbolic link to the created device file but the preceding example could be you know for this instance will become kernel subsystem subsystems and the additional thing is the symbolic link here web camera one then what we have last option one of the action that you dev support is to assign a particular SLNX context on the device node and actually this was the uh, whatever was discussed in previous three slides was required for this slide and this was the uh, topic given for my training uh, suggested by the participant we want to understand how to set up a device label for a device uh, how to set up a SC Linux label on a device node or device file so for that 
prerequisite was required. So one of the action that you dev support is to assign a particular SL and a context on the device node. And this is through done through this label and this is uh, S E C label S E Linux action. Rest all were okay. L rest all were discussed. That was not our objective of this training, not objective of this session, agenda of this session. But we discussed that so that we specify that where to specify this S E Linux context. In continuation of the previous rule we were talking about, we add S C C label S C Linux and we specify the context here. This is what is required and this is what we were trying to understand through the background used in the three slides to explain the concept. So basically object was how to specify UDEV uh, you know uh, SE Linux label to our device files and that can be done with SEC label uh, SE Linux followed by equal to sign followed by the rule which we specify or the label which we want to. Note that this action is only applicable to the device node that is created. If the rule also sets a symbolic link, then symbolic link itself is left untouched and will inherit the file device T context. So this is what it is. This is how we can set a label for a device nodes. And this session was quick. That's all for this session. Thank you very much.